Hi, Elon. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and by here, I mean... <laughs> sure. Electronically. Electronically. My bits and, are there. <laughs> and where are you right now? Um, I'm at, um, I'm at uh, the Tesla uh, Giga Texas factory um, that we're about to complete. Um, so, yeah, what you see behind me is um, the, the factory, basically. Um, we have the uh, office space and the factory kind of uh, together. So um, I think this is kind of important that uh, we don't have uh, ivory tower management or engineering and that the management and engineering is uh, as close to the factory as possible. So, um, uh, yeah, so you can see what's going on in the factory and, um, and stay grounded. All right, well, I'm in the ivory tower here in front of a lot of CEOs and a live audience here in uh, Washington, DC. And we are also joined by lots of people all over the internet. We are streaming this to WSJ.com, Twitter, and YouTube. So we have a very brief amount of time, only 30 minutes, um, but I'm very excited to talk about a wide range of things. I want to start sure. with uh, talking about our world, the world we currently live in. We currently live in. Then I want to move to the future of the world and then uh, talk a little bit about your world. And so we'll start right here yeah. in Washington, DC, where everyone is talking about the infrastructure plan and the bill. And um, I wanted to ask you, you know, say tomorrow you get a phone call from Joe Biden, and he says. <laughs> I think that's unlikely, but sure. <laughs> okay. You know, he, he just gives you a call, and he says, you know, I haven't been talking a lot about Tesla lately, but you know, what do you, what do you need from this bill? What are your needs? What do you answer him? Um, well, I, 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 to be, I mean, to be totally frank, I'm, I, I, I don't know if we, at least no, no one at Tesla has actually brought up whether they, they care about this bill or not. I, I think if this bill happened or didn't happen, I, I, I don't know. We don't think about it at all, really. Okay. It, um, it, it might be better. Honestly, it might be better if the, if the bill doesn't pass, because um, we've spent so much money, uh, you know. It's like the, 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 the federal budget deficit is insane. Um, you know, it's like three trillion dollar federal uh, expenditures are seven trillion. Uh, federal revenue is four trillion. That's a three trillion dollar uh, difference in. Uh, if this was a company, it'd be a three trillion dollar loss. So uh, I don't know if we should be adding to that loss. That seems pretty crazy. Um, something's got to give. You can't just spend uh, three trillion dollars more than you own uh, every year and expect. Uh, you know, don't expect something bad to happen. I, I think, you know, this is not good. Um, well, wait, Mitch McConnell and, and, is actually and, and, saying... In fact, if I may elaborate on that, the, the, the deficit is more than $3 trillion when you look at uh, the uh, future obligations. So it's uh, $7 trillion of current expenditures, but the it's, it's much more than that if you look at future obligations for Social Security, Medicare, and, and, and so forth. So we're running this incredible deficit. I, I, someone's got to give. I, I, I don't know... This, this can't keep going. Well, Mitch McConnell said something similar. That it wasn't too, uh, not as uh, extreme as you. Um, but it just, okay, so Simple let's say math. his follow-up question is, okay, Elon, you don't think we need to spend anything on the infrastructure? If he says to you, what is the biggest improvement we can make to the U.S. infrastructure? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you say? Um, I, I think we, we generally could uh, have better airports, better highways, um, and uh, you know I think uh, that that, that <sighs> especially in in cities that are congested, we've got to do something uh, to deal with the, the extreme traffic, uh, which I think is some combination of double decorating freeways um, and building tunnels. Um, but if, if we don't do something, um, we will be stuck in traffic for forever. Um, and uh, as autonomy vehicle, uh, autonomous vehicles come to the fore, um, and it's it's easier to drive without going through the pain of of having to drive to drive yourself, which which is absolutely coming, uh, and will be one of the biggest transformations uh, ever in human civilization. Um, th there will be more cars on the road, um, and the traffic will get much worse. And so we really need to do some combination of tunnels um, and, uh, or, or like I said, double decorating freeways. I'm not a big believer in, in flying cars. They're basically helicopters with wheels. 
um, and people don't want uh, the, the skies to be swarming with helicopters. So um, it's, it's tunnels and double deckering freeways. Um, we don't have a traffic problem in suburbs. We have a traffic problem on freeways because the, they, they were just too small and did not anticipate the size of the uh, urban environments that we currently experience. So, um, yeah, but I, I don't see a strong effort in this direction. Um, well, I want to come back to autonomous vehicles, but I um, want to just stay a little bit more on the role of government. You said at this conference actually a year ago that you think government should really just be hands off when it comes to innovation. Though with this bill, there is a lot of support for EVs, and it could be the, the biggest change that we've seen uh, throughout the country in terms of the infrastructure of EVs, and it, and it helps Tesla. What do you think the role of government should be? Um, I, I think the, the role of government should be that of like a referee, um, and you know, like, uh, and and, uh, but not a player on the field. Um, so. Um, generally, you know, government should, I think, just try to get out of the way and and not uh, impede progress. I think we're, there's a general problem, not just in the U.S., but in, in most countries, where the rules and regulations keep um, increasing every year. Uh, rules and regulations are immortal; they don't die. There's not a natural. Occasionally, you see some law with a sunset provision, but but really, otherwise. The vast majority of rules and regulations uh, live forever, and so if more rules and regulations are applied every year, and it just keeps growing and growing, eventually uh, it, it just it takes longer and longer, and, and it's harder to do things. Um, and there's there's not really um, an effective garbage collection system for removing rules and regulations. Um, and so, the gradually the the this this hardens the arteries of civilization, um, where you're able to do less and less over time. Um, so I think government should be really trying hard to get rid of rules and regulations um, that perhaps had some merit at some point, but uh, don't have merit uh, currently. But there's very little effort in this direction. Um, this, this is a big problem. And we, I also want to come back to you later. I know that you do have some other stance on sort of AI and what the, the rules and regulations we should have on, on that. Um, but it, you're right now, you're sitting in a, in a Tesla factory. Where, how are you spending your time these days uh, between the split between SpaceX and Tesla? Um, yeah, it's, it's about um, even between SpaceX and Tesla. Um, it depends on, you know, what is the kind of crisis of the moment. Uh, so some weeks will be more Tesla, more SpaceX. Um, but I, I mean, I work a lot. I work seven days a week and put in, put in a, 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 some pretty crazy hours. So. Um, but it, it really depends on on where the where, where I'm needed most. I, like basically, just I, I triage the tasks and um, try to do the things that are most useful um, or, or, or where I'm most needed. Um, you know, and, and it varies from 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 one week to the next. Um, but you know, just going back to that that infrastructure bill for a second, um, the because um, sometimes the criticism of Tesla is like, hey, Tesla gets all these subsidies, but it's worth noting that for the the vehicle purchase tax credit, the seventy five hundred dollars, Tesla stopped getting that like two years ago. So we've, uh, we, whereas um, uh, everyone else, I think except for GM, still gets the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit. So all of our you know sales this year and I think last year were uh, had nothing to do with the the, the 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 tax credit because we were no longer eligible because we'd made so many electric cars. Uh, Tesla has made roughly two thirds of all the electric cars in the United States. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if most people are aware of that. Um, so, yeah, so Tesla's made basically twice as many electric vehicles as the rest of industry combined. Um, and we, we don't need the $7,500 tax credit. Um, I would say, honestly, I would just can this whole bill. Don't pass it. That's my recommendation. What it what about what about the the support though for the charging network? I mean, there are there are parts of this bill. And, and, no, no. I mean, you know, do, do we need support for gas stations? Uh, we don't. So uh, there's no there's no need for this uh, for, for support for a charging network. I would delete it. Delete. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm literally, I'm literally saying get rid of all subsidies. And but also for oil and gas. If you think about also how this affects your competitors, is that 
Does that impact how some of your view on this? Um, I mean, may, maybe they need it. I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I think just generally, uh, I'm in favor of deleting subsidies. I mean, when we started Tesla, there were there were no EV subsidies at all, and gasoline was super cheap. Uh, we did not anticipate any subsidies. Uh, that that came later, and and that came the. The $7,500 tax credit came as a result, not of Tesla activity, but of, of General Motors lobbying for it. Um, so, you know, um, I would just say, just, just delete them all. All right, but oh, like, there, there are some other good things in this bill, that some would argue. I mean, the, a lot of money earmarked for R&D. Would, would you want to put that towards something? No. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. We're going to move on from the bill, because I think we get what uh, you're saying on it. it. In, in general, we, we should just, we, we, if we don't cut government spending, I, something really bad's going to happen. This is crazy. Our, our, our spending is so far in excess of revenue, it, it's insane. Um, but like, you could zero out all billionaires in the, in the country. There's almost like anti billionaire BS. Uh, well, uh, if, if you zeroed out all the billionaires, you still wouldn't solve the deficit. All right, I'll ask you another question around uh, the billionaire BS. Say tomorrow we, we've talked, you get the phone call from, uh, from President Biden. Next day, actually, we decide, we, we elect you to Congress. Somehow this happens. You're now working on tax bills. You're, you're working on tax policy. What, what is, how do you tax someone like you? How do you tax billionaires? Uh, I mean, first of all, I pay a lot of tax. I mean, my marginal tax rate is like 53%. So that's not trivial. Um, and, uh, you know, and then obviously there's like, you know, uh, uh, asset-based taxes, the sales tax, and, and everything else. Um, there's also the estate tax. I, I, and generally, I, I think I think the the estate tax is is a good tax. Um, like if you think of uh, assets beyond a certain level um, that that are far beyond, uh, let's say, somebody's ability to consume, um, then you know at a certain point, really, what you're doing is capital allocation. So you're not, it's not money for personal expenditure, it's, it's it, what you're doing is, is capital allocation. And it, it does not make sense to take uh, the, the job of capital allocation away from people who have demonstrated great skill in capital allocation and give it to, uh, you know, an entity that has demonstrated very poor skill in, in capital allocation, which is the government. Uh, I mean, you can think of the government essentially uh, as a corporation in the limit. Uh, it, it is, it is a, the government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence and with and where you have no recourse. Can so how much money do you want to give part? that entity? Could you explain the last part quickly? And then we're, I want to move on to some product stuff. Sure. I, I mean, I can talk for, for a bit longer, if you'd like, than the half an hour, <laughs> um, if, you, if you're worried about getting to other questions. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the, the, I hear we have is, nobody else joining us at this conference. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, government is a corporation in the limit. So um, if you, it, it is the most corporate thing, it is, the, it is maximum corporation. Um, and it, but it's also a monopoly um, and, and also is the only one that's allowed legally to do violence. So why, why would you want to give a, a corporation with no competition that, that can't even really go bankrupt um, more money? Um, now, now, it's not as though I think the government shouldn't exist or that they're not good things that the government can do or, or things that are necessary for the government to do. Um, you know, for example, a, um, you know, science programs where, uh, you know, we, we send a probe to, to Mars um, and the value of that is, it's, a, it's sort of a, it's a small amount of value for, for all citizens, but it would be inefficient to sort of go and collect, you know, $10 from, from every citizen for a Mars probe. Um, and so that, therefore, it's better to have the government do something like that, um, you know, like a heavy science program, uh, rather than, than try to collect small amounts of money from, from everyone. Um, so so I'm, I'm not somebody who is, who is sort of an extreme libertarian uh, and thinks the government should not do anything. I just think we should um, minimize what the government does, because the, the government's efficiency at spending is is just going to be lower than um, a, a competitive commercial company, but by a lot. Um, if you look at, say, um, East Germany versus West Germany or North Korea versus South Korea, and you look at the GDP per capita of uh, East and West Germany or North and South Korea, the, the, the difference is gigantic. 
Um, and that's just the difference that you, between East and West Germany. Or, uh, or, um, you know, it's, it's like a random line was drawn, uh, basically depending on where the, the, the Red Army was and, and where the Allied troops were. Um, and uh, East Germany's productivity was like uh, at least five times worse than West Germany. Um, and it's not like West Germany was like some bastion of capitalism. They were quite socialist, really. So there may be as much as an order of magnitude difference between a, the efficiency of, of a competitive private company versus the government. I'm going to shift away from government, come back to your world. Um, just, just thinking about sort of how you juggle Tesla and SpaceX, and you've said along the way that you know, the, the workload at Tesla is, is quite a lot. Have you, um, and, and I know now you, can, uh, you could regain the, the chairman position, have you thought about uh -huh. that? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about uh, your sort of your, your title and your, and your position there right now? I mean, it's interesting that these, these titles, um, you, you know that there's, there's actually only uh, uh, three legal, t three titles that, that actually mean anything for a corporation. Uh, it's pre president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, and technically, they, they could be the same person. And all these other titles are just basically made up. So CEO is a made up title, CFO is a made up title, general counsel made up title, uh, don't mean anything. That's um, a nice, I think a room of CEOs are, uh, how, how we feel about that. Yep. Yeah, it, it was like if, obviously just somebody's marketing experiment. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> so I guess um, I'll be more direct. I mean, are, are you considering stepping down as CEO? Is, it, would you would you transfer, be chairman, and think about being chief product officer? I mean, since CEO well, title I mean, doesn't matter anyway. I'm like, I, I changed my title to to techno king. Um, <laughs> and, and by the way, this is a formal SEC filing. It's I'm legally a formal whatever techno king. Um, I just did that as kind of like a joke because just just to show that that these titles don't don't mean a lot. Um, you, you can see what what is actually legally, ne legally necessary if you, if you fill out the form for uh, creating a C corp, and then you see it's president, treasurer, and secretary. They need a director too, um, but that's that's basically it. Um, and then all these other you know ch chief uh, whatever officer are uh, basically just uh, made up. Is the Tesla bot in the running for any of these titles? <laughs> Not yet. It's maybe in the future. But but speaking of the Tesla bot, I, I, I know you've talked about the importance of creating this bot for the future of AI. Tell me a little bit about where you're at with this project and uh, what we can expect uh, in the next coming months. Um, well, with the Tesla autopilot or full self-driving, we're effectively, I think, creating the most uh, advanced practical AI for navigating the real world. Um, and you, you can always think of Tesla as like the world's biggest robot company um, or, or semi-sentient robot company. So then, so, you know, so we have, the car is kind of a robot on four wheels and, and so then, well, you know, we could probably take that same technology and, and put it in a humanoid robot and have that robot be useful. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so essentially for, to, to have the humanoid part, we, we need to develop some custom uh, actuators and sensors um, and then essentially use the Tesla full self-driving or, or autopilot or just generally speaking real world navigation uh, AI in in the humanoid robot, and um, I think this could be quite profound. Um, I don't know exactly when we will get we will get this right, but we will get it right. Um, and you've said also that it will solve some labor issues. I mean, what are some things that you envision this bot doing? Well, it, it has the potential to be a generalized substitute for human labor over time, and. Um, the economy, the foundation of the economy is labor. Um, I mean, capital equipment is essentially distilled labor. So um, I was talking to a friend of mine actually to say, you know, just like, what, what, what should we optimize for? Um, and he, what he said was um, gross profit per employee, uh, fully considered. So you've got to include the supply chain in that. Um, the, the fundamental constraint is labor. There are not enough people. I can't emphasize this enough. There are not enough people. Um, and 
I think one of the biggest risks to civilization is the low birth rate uh, uh, and the rapidly declining birth rate. Uh, it is, it is, and yet so many people, including smart people, think that there are too many people in the world and think that the population is growing out of control. It's completely the opposite. Please look at the numbers. Uh, if people don't have more children, civilization is going to crumble. Mark my words. Is this why you have so many children? I'm trying to set a good example. <laughs> yeah. You know, got to practice what I preach. <laughs> Um, I won't ask you to predict how many more children you're going to have tonight, but um, we're, I, I, I want to move on to some future talk. Uh, that's part of where I'm going with this Tesla bot. I, I'm not as good at Twitter as you are, but people on Twitter are asking me, what's going to happen on 12.9? Can you tell me what's going to happen on 12.9? <laughs> nothing as far as I know. I, I don't know where this came from. Um, I think it's just, this is just one of those memes that, I don't know, it came out of nowhere, but uh, as far as I know, nothing. Um, but maybe something will happen that I'm not aware of. All right, so I want to ask now a little bit farther out in the future, into, into 2022. Um, and we can't get to all your future projects, but I thought a fun way to do this might be, I'm going to name some of the projects. I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and you tell me what your plan is in 2022 to move that project along and what we can expect from it. But okay. 60 seconds. You only get 60 seconds. OK. You going to do it? All right, here sure. we go. So the first one is, hold on, I think I know how to work this Apple Watch. All right, 60 seconds and Cybertruck. <laughs> Cybertruck. Uh, Cybertruck is going to be an incredible product. I think it's, it may, it may, it may be our, our best product ever. And I think it probably will be. Um, uh, it, it has a lot of new technology, so it's a, it's a hard car to make. Um, I bet it will be awesome. Uh, and um, I think I've said before that you know, we're aiming for volume production in, in 2023. Um, and I, I will provide a, a more detailed product update at the Tesla earnings call the, you know, at the early next year. So um, I, w I wish it could be sooner, but, but that's, that's most likely uh, when it happens. Um, it'll be something really special, you know, like just one of those kind of rare products that happens once in a while that's, that's really special. Um, OK. That was about 60 seconds. I don't know what's going on with my watch, but we're, we're, we're on Cybertruck. We're on, now we're on to Neuralink. OK. Uh, OK. <laughs> yeah, so no, it, it, the big question is, in 2022, how are you pushing that project along? What happens? So Neuralink, we, um, we, we have uh, Neuralink's working well in, um, in monkeys, um, and we're obviously do, doing um, just a, a lot of testing um, and, and just confirming that it's, it's very safe and reliable and, uh, and that it, the, the Neuralink device can be removed safely. Um, people may have seen the uh, demo that we, we, we published uh, earlier this year, the video of a monkey playing uh, the video game Pong uh, telepathically using the Neuralink in its, in its, uh, in its, in its brain. Um, and, uh, it's completely wireless, uh, charges inductively. But basically, the monkey looks completely normal and yet is playing a video game telepathically, um, which is, I think, quite, quite profound. Um, we will have, uh, we, we hope to have this in our first humans, which will be uh, people that have um, severe spinal cord injuries, like tetraplegics, quadriplegics, uh, next year, uh, pending uh, FDA approval. And, um, and I should say, our standards for implanting the device are substantially higher than, than what the FDA requires, um, just as our standards for safety with Tesla are much higher than what uh, uh, the uh, US government requires. Um, and I've taken a little more than 60 seconds. Yes, uh, I'm about to cut you off. Because I, I think there's, there's something that's, that's, I think, pretty cool. And, and I, I do want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, emphasis on cautiously optimistic about this. I think, I think we have a chance with Neuralink of being able to restore uh, full body functionality to someone who has a spinal cord injury. Um, meaning, I think, I think we have a chance, I emphasize a chance of being able to allow someone who um, cannot walk or use their arms uh, to be able to, to walk again, okay. Not naturally. 
Okay, um, I'm not going to cut that. I do, can't really cut you off when you're talking about that. So <laughs> it's, it's a super big deal, yeah. and I don't want to raise hopes uh, unreasonably, but but I'm increasingly convinced that, that this can be done. All right. So the the last one is Starship. <laughs> sure. Because there's a lot so, happening in 2022 on Starship, right? Yes. Um, man, Starship is a hard, 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 hard project. Um, th this is the the biggest rocket ever made. Um, it will have a thrust and, and mass uh, double that of a Saturn V, uh, which is the largest rocket to reach orbit, um, and is intended to be fully and rapidly reusable. This is a profound, um, if, if we are successful with this, which I, I think we will be, but I don't know if we'll be, be there in 2022. I hope so. Um, th this is a profound revolution in access to orbit. Um, there has never been a fully reusable orbital launch vehicle. Um, this is the, this is the, this is the holy grail of of space technology. Um, it is the fundamental breakthrough that is necessary for humanity to become a spacefaring civilization. Um, you know, this, this 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 absorbs more of my mental energy than than probably any other single thing. Um, but but it is it is so preposterous it is so preposterously difficult um, that there are times where I wonder whether we can actually do this. Um, and if you had to summarize very quickly, what is so hard about it for just a normal person to understand? What is so hard about it? Well, this will take a lot more than sixty seconds. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm so interested. <laughs> okay. Um, well. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So, okay. Um, I, I am overdue for for doing a Starship update. Um, so uh, we live on a planet where the gravity is uh, actually very strong. Um, we actually live on the densest planet in the solar system. Um, our atmosphere is very thick, um, and what this comes down to is that uh, you know a typical uh, orbital rocket, rocket might be able to put about two percent of its liftoff mass uh, into orbit. Um, and then this is with smart people trying hard, uh, maybe two, two and a half percent. Um, then, um, and, and no rocket, to the best of my knowledge, has ever gotten above four percent of its liftoff mass to orbit. Uh, so, now in order to make a rocket fully, fully reusable, you've you've got to um, basically create a rocket that can do about 4%, if not more than 4% of its liftoff mass to orbit, which ha hasn't happened before. So that means you, it, you have to have it, basically A pluses across the board, um, incredibly efficient engines, incredibly efficient structure. Um, um, you, you do need scale because there are some efficiencies of scale. That's why part of why Starship is so, is so gigantic. Um, because, for example, the, the, the brain of the rocket uh, really weighs about the same if it's a small rocket or a big rocket. Um, so with a big rocket, you get to have the uh, avionics be um, basically round down to zero uh, percent or will be inconsequential in the mass of the vehicle. Um, I, yeah, um, then you need to make an incredibly light heat shield. Um, and, and just it, there's so many things that need to be done to have both the booster and the uh, sh the upper stage or ship be, be reusable. Um, insanely difficult. It's not like like many super smart people have tried to do this before and, and no one has succeeded. And most of the time they've just given up part way through. Um, but yeah. but if full and rapid reusability can be achieved, it reduces the cost of access to orbit by um, a factor of 100 or more. Um, so so it, more it's just like, go, eventually. Yeah, it's like, like an aircraft. Imagine if, if, if an aircraft or a car or any, any form of transport was not reusable. Um, imagine if you had to buy a new plane every time you flew. That would be, make, Air flight insanely expensive, or, or a car. Um, 
if you had to get a new car every time you drove somewhere, that would be unbelievably expensive as opposed to simply refueling it. So we've got to get rockets to the point where we simply refuel the rocket and we don't throw it away. And with Falcon 9, we've, we've managed to make the booster reusable and the, the fairing the nose cone reusable, but not the upper stage. So, so we've made, the, I, I think, the most progress in reusability that has ever been done. But with Starship, we're hoping to make the whole thing reusable. This is, uh, this is profound. Like I said, it's the difference, it's, it is the difference between humanity being a single planet species and a multi-planet species. It's, it, it's really that, that big of a deal. All right, well, Elon, they're, they're running the clock down on me, so I want to ask you one last question, and we'll try to go to at least one or two audience questions. Um, I, you know, I wanted to ask you a little bit about humor. Um, and you, you're a pretty funny, funny guy. You show it on Twitter a lot. Uh, you've hosted SNL. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that plays into your management style. I mean, do, would your coworkers say you're funny? Is this something you're sort of bringing to the office now? Is it, is it helped with managing your teams? I mean, I think I'm funny. Um, I, I find my jokes not funny. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, I mean, I do crack a lot of jokes. They don't all land, um, but uh, I, I, I am aspirationally, uh, you know, uh, aspirationally funny. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we try to have a good sense of humor. Uh, at, at the office too. Okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, yeah. Um, you know, I also wanted to ask that lately on Twitter, and you, you've been poking fun at people for their age quite a bit. Um, and I wanted to have a sense of, do you not plan to age? And what is, what is your, um, you know, how are, how are you combating aging? Is there some secret technology we don't know about that you are, that you've got? Um, I am not aware of any secret technology to combat aging, um, and I, I mean I don't I don't know that we should really try to live for a, a, a super long time. Um, I think there is some. It, it is important for us to die because, you know, lo, most of the times people don't change their mind; they just die. And so if, if they if they if we live forever, then we might become a very ossified society where new ideas cannot succeed. So, um, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not poking fun at, at aging. I'm just saying, um, you know, if, if we've got uh, people in uh, very important positions that have to make decisions that are critical to the security of the country, then they need to have sufficient uh, presence of mind and cognitive ability to, to make those decisions well, um, because the whole country is depending on them. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you might say psychedelics were your, your, your way of, of not aging, but um, I would like to just go if there's any, if anyone's got one or two questions for this guy. I, I don't think dropping acid makes you age less. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think drugs probably make you age more, not less. But, um. All right. Any? Okay. Well, Elon, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Oh, there is a question. Sorry. I did not see any hands up. Uh, thank you, uh, Baldas from BGD Holdings. I'd be very interested. Uh, first, let me thank you for what you're doing uh, in terms of your breakthrough for uh, humanity. But I am curious about your say. views on China and the United States, just on a free-flowing basis if you want to share a few thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're at an interesting point in history where um, the United States has been the world's largest economy for as long as anyone can remember. Um, you know, and I think the U.S. became the largest economy, I don't know, probably 120, 130 years ago. Um, and there's nobody that old, really, anymore who, who can remember a time when the United States was not the world's biggest economy. Uh, now we're, we're heading towards a situation where China is going to be probably ha have an economy two to three times the size of the United States. And so that, that's just a different, um, different world. Um, I, I, I do think there's, you know, there's, there, there are a lot of people in the government in China who, who kind of grew up uh, with China not being, with China being a, a small economy, um, and maybe who feel like China was pushed around a lot. Um, and, but they, but they haven't fully um, 
appreciated the fact that, that China really is going to be the big hit on the block. Um, and, and so, like, if you're going to be the big hit on the block, then you, you, you can really be, be pretty chill about things, you know. You, you don't have to worry about, like, other countries are not really a threat to you if you're by far the biggest kid on the block. Um, and, you know, so I, I would say it's, that, that's kind of an important mindset change. Uh, ho hopefully that, 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 that uh, you know, China goes through is just, you know, to think like, if you are the biggest kid, like, how would you want the biggest kid on the block to behave? Uh, and now if you are going to be the biggest kid on the block, then wouldn't you want to behave like you'd want, like you would have wanted the biggest kid on the block to behave? Um, I think that's that's pretty important. Um, I mean, overall, you know, I think like Tesla has has a good relationship with with China, um, and I don't mean to endorse everything that China does um, any more than I would say endorse everything the United States does uh, or any country, um, but. You know, o overall, I I think um, yeah, we are headed to to an, an interesting and different world, um, and I hope that we can remember that you know we're all human beings, and you know let's let's just try to have as as positive um, a relationship as possible, and um, you know and and work towards mutual prosperity of humanity as a whole. Well, Elon, thank you so much for being here tonight, or where you are, and uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, I hope to see you next year. Back to Thoreau.